Hi, this is Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm, and I'm out here showing you what I've done for the fall garden before we get inside to do some jack-o'-lantern pot scrubbers. I wanted to come out here and show you that we got the fall garden in. Um, the greens are starting to come up, and I'm leaving the tomatoes because I'm getting another crop of tomatoes coming in, which is good. I've got a couple... Um, they will be red peppers right now. They're still green. That one's turning red down there. That one's turning red. So I'll leave this up as long as I can. I'm not going to plant anything in that one. And then I did carrots out in this one. I just planted them yesterday. The beans I'm just letting go. They're still producing one or two here and there. I'm just saving the ones that are coming off of that for seed now. And I still, this is my herb garden. And I just I wasn't going to plant anything during the winter, so I just threw some carrots in there. I got my um, I repotted the valerian, the valerian root, and um, well, it's that's what I use it for. But anyway, I replanted it, so it looks. I got marshmallow over there, horehound, calendula, uh, mint, and echinacea. I still got a tomato over there, and everything. I still have. I uh, left some. The larian in the pot just to see uh, to try to uh, and I'm afraid to keep them in two different in just one place so over the winter so I you know spread them out. I've got a pod on my devil's claw that is nice and big and feels all fuzzy. So that was what I did outside with the fall gardens and. I know I've been doing a lot of videos on loom knitting lately, but just because the season lends itself well to that kind of crafting sort of situation. So I do have a lot of other videos scheduled on um, that I'll be doing soon here, but I needed to get those crafty ones out of the way for in time for Halloween in case people wanted to make them. So I'll just give you a, a look at what we did out here in the fall garden. Yeah, Comfrey's going good. So that's what I did out in the garden. So let's go inside and we'll start the jack-o'-lantern pot scrubbers. Today, as promised, I'm showing you how to do these quick and easy jack-o'-lantern pot scrubbers. Now you can find the orange chubby yarns. I don't know for sure if Mary Maxim Scrub It has it. I just used a cotton yarn on these and they don't have the little scrubby nubbly stuff on them, but they will, you know, they're good for scrubbing. They're sort of like a dishcloth. So that's what I use. But you can find the orange scrub it yarn if you want. What I did was, if you watched my pumpkin coaster video, I made the pumpkin coasters. And, and so you would just do the exact same thing that I did there. You could use the scrub it yarn or the, the orange cotton yarn. I used the orange cotton yarn for both. And I cut the felt stem, the pumpkin stem, and I just sewed it on there. So if you watch that, that's exactly what we did. And I sewed the, the I had the embossed felt leaves and I told you how if you don't have the embossed ones that were already uh, pre-cut, that you could just cut out a leaf shape out of the felt, stiffer craft felt, and sew it on there. You could also get away with not using them at all for the pump for the jack o' lantern if you want. Then uh, simply cut triangles out of the a softer black felt. I didn't use the stiff black felt for the face. Um, let's see what do I have? Yes, I did two, two eyes. Ah, two eyes. A smaller one for the nose, and then a, a, like a sort of a wider one, like a wider corner for the uh, mouth. You could do if you wanted to. You could get really creative and do different mouths, just like you would for a jack o' lantern. But I was trying to keep it simple because I was doing a whole bunch of them, sort of, sort of like a assembly lining, <laughs> making them. So I wanted something simple. So here would be the leaf and the stem. You could do a straight stem. You could do a, the twisty stem, whatever you want, would like to do. This one I would cut just a little bit in there, a little bit more, a little bit more. So you could play around with how you wanted to do that. So I loom knitted for approximately four inches 
I did mention how I generally just use my index finger from the first knuckle, my knuckle right here until the top of my finger and just knit for about four inches is fine. One on the questions asked me about that they said they felt they had small hands and what, you know, what should they do small fingers and I told them that the average human index finger is like between three and a half and four and a uh, fourth inches long. Um, so, you know, anywhere from three to four inches. I think four inches is really a good, good uh, length. If it, when you get it into the disc form, if it seems too puffy, you can always tuck it in and then cinch it up so that some of it's inside. So that would be up to you. But anyway, so I illuminated just E-wrap stitch. So all I ever use is the E-wrap stitch. And I'm going to cut off about, leave about 18 inches here. I'm going to take it off the room. I'll add that I used the five and a half inch wider peg loom that comes with like the standard sets like that you would get at Walmart. Okay, well I got the I got it off and essentially what you have is a little cuffless hat. I'm going to cinch it up and sew a few stitches here in the center. I'm just gonna leave I'm gonna poke that through the top. Throw poke it through inside. I'm going to leave my needle attached and I'm going to go ahead and attach my eyes and face. I'm just going to be using regular thread. You can go ahead and you could make the disc if you wanted to, but I'm just going to attach it using the center cinching as sort of where my nose is going to go. And I'm just going to so my little triangles on there. I'm going to skip down here and do my nose just so I sort of have a Okay, now that I've finished the face, I'm going to take that needle and that yarn, orange yarn, and I'm going to go around. And I want to cinch up the This is the part where I said that if, if it was too long you could fold it under to where the where you want it and then start it's the cinching part that way that if it was too long that extra length would be tucked inside but I think the four inches is good okay I'm going to sort of arrange it just to secure it in and out just to sort of hook the top to the bottom so it's not like a all right and we have our little jack-o-lantern face um, as far as sewing on the stem okay just using regular Needle and thread. I'm going to sew that stem to the top. I do have videos on how to illuminate if you don't know how to illuminate. These mostly what I do are project videos, so I'm assuming you already know how to do that basic E wrap stitch. But I do have uh, several videos on teaching you how to illuminate. Um, the intro to illuminating, and then I show you how to illuminate on my Afghan video. Um, I believe on the pot scrubber video, I briefly go, I do show you how to do the e wrap stitch really quickly. 
But for the most part, I'm going to be assuming that you know how to do this basic stitch and that's why you are looking for projects. Um, this is an easy project for a beginner if you are a beginning illuminator. So because it just uses the e-wrap stitch and it's just basically making a little cuffless hat that you make into a disc. Okay, make sure it's on there pretty secure. Then just if you want the leaf, find a place where you think it looks good. You could also cut the leaves from fabric if you wanted to. All right, and there it is, really cute. And if you watched my black cat one, it looks cute with the black cat scrubbies to make a little set. And uh, it's really a really simple project. So I hope that you watch the pot scrubber video to master that whole thing. It's I mean it's not difficult. And then you can if you really want to look into the do the watch my pumpkin coaster because it's the same exact same exact thing. It's just you know you might want to switch up to scrubby yarn. I just use the cotton yarn and then just add the little decorations. So it makes a really cute little Halloween. And, and you can make so many of these so fast. You can just sit there and whip them out. Like, you know, if you have a couple hours watching TV on a Friday night or something, you can make a whole bunch of them if you want to have a little, you know, you can do a set of two and do it with some rustic twine and, or you could do a set of four and same thing, you know, put them in a little basket. They just have endless possibilities of, for gift giving and bizarre crafts, uh, craft sort of boutique selling possibilities. So this has been Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm, and we will talk to you later. Bye.